This is Couples Court with the Cutlers. This is the case of Wade versus Free. You all have been together for 10 years, and as we just said, I do a month ago. Miss Wade, why have you brought Mr. Free to court today? I'm trying to find out if my husband is still seeing somebody that he had in a relationship with while we were together. And I have my marriage license still. They gave me 90 days to send it in. And I don't want to fully go through if he can't tell me the truth. So, Mr. Free, what are you here for? I made a mistake in the past, but I'm tired of being crucified every day, every other day. And I just want to prove to this woman that I love her with all my heart, and I'm sorry for the mistakes that I've made. Okay, Miss Wade, do you love your husband? Yes, Your Honor. Okay, so tell me why you're here today, if you love him. I'm trying to get the truth so I can go on and... <sighs> so I can have me back. In order to move forward, you need some answers. Yes, Your Honor. And it's almost killing you inside I to have this uncertainty. I pretty much feel already dead on the inside. Like, I have no soul. You all have been together for 10 years. What happened to, to break the trust? I was driving down the road one day, and I had recognized somebody, a family friend, and I had picked her up. She was telling me that she was homeless, so me with a big heart. I told her I would take her in. And when she moved in, it went south from there. I felt that <clears throat> she was taking, giving her most of her attention to somebody else's relationship other than our own. That's because you was too busy worried about paying more attention to her than you was to your own wife. Are you suggesting that your husband and this friend that you let in your home got together? Yes, Your Honor. One night, him and his brother and all the males were outside trying to get the truck unstuck. She took it up on herself to go out there. Well, they all got muddy. He come in, he got in the shower. She come on my porch, stripped butt naked, put a towel around her. Instead of her going to her room, she went to my room. She's muddy. She's getting in the shower with your husband. Yes, Your Honor. No. She I, never... <laughs> she she never made it. She to, never made she it. She never to, made it to I the... was walking out of my room when she was walking in my room. Yeah. So she was planning to get in the shower. Yes. She had the towel wrapped around her, butt naked and everything. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Free? <laughs> to my defense, I was in the shower. I, I had no idea all this was going on. That wasn't the only thing, though. She was bent over in the hallway, and he was, like, directly at her. And that's when I confronted him, and he was like, no, that's not no. true. And it, I've never did anything she, with her. She caught me at a glance, and... That's she... not a glance. That was a stare. No. Okay, was she naked still? No, no she had on some booty shorts. Okay. Were you leading her on? No, I was not leading her on. I, I, I don't believe none of it, but... Okay, was this the only thing that made you think they might be sleeping together? I caught them in, in his mama's. Oh. What? One night, we had gotten to a fight, and I kept calling his phone. It would, he, it would ring at first. He answered it a couple times. He declined it, and then it went straight to voicemail. And I had asked her, I said, do you need a ride home from work? She said, no, my man had me a ride. Who is her? Cleo. Okay. So come 1.30, I kept calling her. She declined her calls. So I finally made it to his mama's house, and his truck was there. When I got in there... He was at the door butt naked and she was hiding on the side of the bed. What did you do? I mean, really? She I, broke down I, the I froze. I, it's like my, my soul had left my body that night. Okay, so what did you say? I mean, if I walked in and my husband's butt naked and the woman who's staying with me free is there butt naked, I'd have a conversation. What does that look like? I was angry, but I was also hurt. And I just wanted to sit down and talk about it and see if, where was we going to go? She more woman than me, because we wouldn't have been sitting and talking. Yeah. It's like, I thought it was going to go there when I caught him, but the, the feeling was more different. It was like, you just caught the love of your life with another woman. You sound like you were just broken. You couldn't yes. even do what you should have done. Yes. You just, you just yes, fell Ron. apart. So, Mr. Free? How do you end up sleeping with your wife's friend? She was making sexual advances to me, and I, was, I got something from her, from an affection from her that I was not getting from my wife. Because she... she you didn't try. She was more interested in, in everybody else's relationship 
versus our own. She was more interested in giving you oral sex, not not how I was, so, how we do it. You were not getting what you wanted from your wife, so you went to your wife's friend. I, I talked to my wife about showing me more affection, showing us more attention towards one another. No, that's not the right kind. You All right, so the sorry. time that she walked in and caught you, was that the first time you had been with your wife's friend? No. How many times had you been with her? S several times before that. Several, that is... Several times, okay. and your wife never caught you on those times? No, Your Honor. She didn't have any idea? No, Your Honor, she didn't. And this woman's up in your house living under her roof. Yeah. You bold. You, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Tell me she's not still there. No. Okay. <laughs> All right. No. So what? How did? <laughs> so how did that transpire when you asked her to leave your premises? He took her and dropped her off. And instead of going and dropping her off where she was supposed to take her and drop her off at, there was their their meeting spot where he took her again. Your husband takes her to wherever she's supposed to be going. And they stop and hit it again? Yes. For old time's sake. Yes, Your Honor. I did not have any other contact with her after that. After okay. the last time you got one for the road. Yes. Literally. <laughs> Mr. Free was running free that night. You know, Mr. Cutler, there's a wife's side, there's a husband's side, and there's the mistress's side. Yeah. That mistress is here in this courtroom. <laughs> Would you escort the witness in, please? Yes, Your Honor. Ma'am, come right up to the witness stand. Good day. How are you? Good. Would you state your name, please, for the court? Cleo Everett. Cleo Everett. Miss Everett, you are the woman that moved in with Miss Wade and Mr. Free. Is that correct? Yes. How do you know them? I was friends with her sister. And Ms. Wade offered her home to you? Yes. How do you go from taking a generous offer, I would consider, to sleeping with her husband? It was just a bad time in my life, and I didn't care about anyone around me or anything going on. I never did anything intentionally to hurt this woman. It was just the fact that I had given up on everything. Mr. Free has testified that you came on to him. Is that true? Our relationship started happening over a conversation where we were talking about me not being satisfied with the person I was with. Then I received a text message asking if it was true, and that is how our relationship started. So he pushed up on you. He texted no. me over the conversation no. that we had playing cards in the kitchen. And what did he say in that text? He asked if I really wasn't being satisfied. And you answered? I answered yes. And he said he could help you with that? Yes. How soon after that conversation or that text conversation did you all actually... Did you get Within to test it out? Within a week. And how many times did you have sex with Mr. Free? I can't put a number on it. Okay. <laughs> did he ever tell you he loved you? One time. Did you believe him? Yes. Mr. Free. Mr. Free? Yes, Your Honor. This young lady seems very credible to me. Yes, ma'am. And she says that you pushed up on her. She made sexual advances and innuendos all the time, and she was directing them towards me. So she said she wasn't being sexually satisfied? Yes. And you said you could take care of that? I didn't know. I mean, I asked her a question. I, 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 I... <laughs> that was a yes or no question? Yes. Did you know that that was a recipe for danger and that you were putting your, your marriage in jeopardy? Yes, Your Honor. I had put a tracker on his phone. The phone led back to where they were meeting up, Fire Tower. <laughs> the, the, I had passed by there that afternoon and her truck was parked right outside where they were meeting at. So... He was there at the same time. Your How Honor. long ago was this? About three, four weeks ago. And so that's one of the reasons you don't believe it's done. Yes. Is there anything else that you want to know? I made a profile, a fake profile, and I went catfishing, and I went messaging her, pretending to be him. That is where she started telling me all kinds about everything that happened, about her fantasizing about him. Before you it allowed, happened. She allowed me to bring him, her in my house knowing that she felt that way about you. I have evidence where she was messaging Wait, wait, wait. Me. Did you ever admit that it was you on the phone? Afterwards, yes. 
And what message do you send to Miss Everett? I was texting her, asking her questions about what had happened, when did it happen. And that's what she told me, that it happened Christmas Day. I'm trying to find out the truth because I need to get peace. I need to build me back. My babies need me. And you're not the mother that you need to be. No, you're no, I'm not. And the fact that they had sex on Christmas Day, how do you feel about that? That is not true. Angry, yeah. upset. If it comes back to being that he's lying to me, I'm out of there. I'm leaving. I'm not gonna send my marriage license in. I'm packing up mine and my kids' stuff and I'm I'm going home to my mama where I should be so I could feel myself. <laughs> All right, so, Mr. Free? Yes, Your Honor. Did you have sex with Ms. Everett on Christmas Day? I'm 90% sure that I did not. You're 90% sure? I, I, can't, I can't tell you something that I do not remember. Okay. You don't remember having sex with her? Or... No. What about Christmas Eve? Did you do a Christmas Eve? It may have been Eve? Christmas Eve. It may have been oh. after Christmas, but it was not on Christmas Day. It was so... in the Christmas season. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. So you kept giving a gift. They kept on giving. Yeah. Yeah. Miss Wade, may I see your evidence there, please? Rob, would you please hand that up? Thank you. Thank you. This is a message between you and your husband's mistress. Yes, Your Honor. And at this point, you've told her, you've identified yourself. No. At that point, That's yes, I did. Before she identified no. herself. No. This part <laughs> here, it was when I, I when I done told you who I was. Okay. Let me read it. it says Miss Wade. He's still trying to tell me that y'all oh, didn't yes. Christmas Day. That's why I say he's still lying to me about. And the response from Miss Everett, I heard almost everything, and yes, we did. We twice on Christmas. I know because the second time he woke me up and asked if I was ready for round two. See, you know, see, that's, that's but see, thing. her on her side of the story, first, like when I talked to her in person. She tells me that he woke her up both times. He did. So is it up... The, in, the me, in the message right there, you clearly said one time he woke you up. And then you say I both times. Not, what? Ms. Ms. Everett, he okay. woken up. Please, Ms. Everett, I, are you sure I'm that you had sex with him on Christmas Day? I'm 100% sure positive. That's the only thing I got for Christmas. Mm. That's the only thing you deserve for Christmas. All right, Ms. Wade, direct your comments to the court, please. So, Mr. Mr. Free, on Christmas Day, twice... No, Your Honor. Yes. I hope and pray your, your kids, lie detector my, test comes back oh, that you're telling the truth because that, if not, I'm going to tie a bow up and give it... That's what, that's what she's going to have every year for Christmas. Okay, so, Miss... Ms. She can have you. Okay. <laughs> this is a mess. A hot mess. This is a huge, <laughs> hot mess. We have a husband, we have a wife, and we have a mistress all in the same boat, in the same house, in the same mix, with two big questions. Did they have sex on Christmas Day? And has the affair continued? To get to the bottom of this, the court has ordered a lie detector test for Mr. Free, and we have the results. <laughs> Ron, would you please escort into the courtroom Mr. Todd Redding, a licensed private investigator? Yes, Your Honor. Fine, Your Honor. How are it's you? Good, good to, to see, see you. you. You had a member of your team give Mr. Free a polygraph exam. Mr. Free was asked if he has had sexual intercourse with Miss Everett since January 2016. What was his response? Your Honor, his response was no. What did the lie detector determine? The lie detector examination determined that he was being truthful. How are you feeling? A lot better. But there's one last question, and it's about Christmas. Is that still a deal breaker for you? Yeah. So even if they haven't had sex still. this whole year, a year and a half, if he lied about sex on Christmas, you're still willing to throw yeah, away? Yeah, it's, it's... I don't even want to celebrate that day with him anymore. I told him that. Told him that he took all of my holidays away. All right, let's find out. Mr. Free was asked if he had had sexual intercourse with Miss Everett on Christmas Day, 2015. 
That's correct, Your Honor. What was his response? Your Honor, his response to the question was no. What did the lie detector determine? The lie detector test results determined that he was once again being truthful. So then that means that she is who she is and she's never going to change. Obviously, you said that to break us up. All right, uh, Ms. Wade. Ms. Wade. Ms. Wade. Ms. Wade. Ms. Wade. You just sat there and said you... Ms. Wade. Oh, All right. <laughs> Look, I know why you're upset, but you came here looking for answers and you've got the answers now that you were looking for. Can you forgive him? Now I can, now that I know the truth. I've been telling you the truth since day one. You all have been together for two years. You have one child together. And suspicions of infidelity are wreaking havoc on this relationship. Ms. Thomas, you've initiated this case today. Tell us why. I think he's been cheating. I'm here to prove it today. Ooh. And if he has been cheating from what he's confessed to me, besides what he's confessed to me today, I'm ready to pack up and leave. What kind of issues have happened in the past? Well, he told me he cheated. In the beginning of a relationship, he cheated with two women. And just recently, he told me he had oral sex with, oh, I guess, a woman multiple times. And you just recently found those things out? Yes. After Had I you contacted suspect... the court, this is what he told me. And how has that, that past history of infidelity impacted you right now? It's horrible. I didn't cry this much even when my dad died. I don't... I don't... I don't deal with stuff like this. I've never been in a relationship like this. I've never been hurt to this extent. I'm usually the type of woman, if I have to do all this stuff, I have to check your Instagram, your Facebook, every, your messages, your Gmail. If I have to do all this, it's not for me because I'm not used to... This is not the type of woman I am. So you gonna be done. If it comes out that he's cheating over and above what he's already told you, to, yes. you're out. I'm... There's no point. Yes, I have to go. But he's told you about something, but you think there's more. I think it's more because he gradually tells the truth, and I think maybe he still has some truth he needs to tell me. And from these court papers, your focus is on one particular woman you believe he's cheating with. Yes. Now, he says he has not had sex with her. They're just friends. Okay, you have plenty of friends. Why haven't I met this, this particular friend? Now, why when I argue with the girl, why when I delete her off your, your social media, you keep adding her? Why is she so important to your life? Why does she keep being brought up in our relationship? Mr. P.A., why you keep bringing this babe back? She goes ahead and deletes them. She goes ahead and blocks them. And then once I figure That's it out true. who is being blocked, who is being deleted, you know, I add them back because there's no foul play. There's nothing to hide. Okay, you shut her down once before. You can continue to keep shutting her down. Shut her down again. If I'm asking you to shut this woman down because she's causing problems, and on top of that, you let her disrespect me. Shut her down. I got to say... Loyalty is what I'm looking for today. Mr. P.A., mm -hmm. there's something to be said in a relationship that if it's something that's making you uncomfortable or making your partner uncomfortable, mm -hmm. that you have enough love and care to say, okay, I'm not gonna do that. That's not a necessary livelihood for me. That's not part of my quality world. Understandable. I mean, I had a lot of things, you know what I'm saying, that I was not, you know, enjoying in a relationship to as well. So, it, it was hard for me to respect some of the things that she wanted me to do. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I work all day. You know, I take care of the, you know, outside of the home, and I just wish the inside of the home was taken care of, you know, more better than what it is. You know, I come home... You don't home, get wife treatment if you don't treat me like a wife. I still... Oh. I'm just saying, if you have your standards, I have mine as well. Well, That's my thing well, is not to be with a cheater. That's number one. It's not cheating, being a friend on social media with someone. And some are saying it is cheating. All right, and we've talked about this micro-cheating. They now call it micro-cheating because it's not, you know, in the face. Right. But your own social media, you are interacting with one another, and it, if, if you both are not in agreement... Is micro cheating. Even if you didn't have intercourse with her, why is she still in our lives for? And there it is. So you believe there's more to it than just friends. It's gotta be. So how did she pop up the first time? Well, she popped up uh, when we first met. I guess she was thirsty. Somebody was calling him on his phone and texting his phone constantly. And we we oh, really don't even know who that person was. I huh? mean, I'm I, sorry. neither one of us knows it wasn't that Giselle. number. Come on, keep it 100. 
Every single time we get in an argument, it's why it's Giselle every time to to make me mad. He asks Giselle. I mean, talks to Giselle. So now. you are you talking to her about your relationship? I have in the past. I'm not gonna lie about that because basically that was how our relationship started. You know, what I'm saying back over again. I mean, it was a per I couldn't talk to her, so I I, I found someone to talk to about all my right, issues. All right. Okay. You realize that's a wide open door mm -hmm. to that's a thank bad you, recipe. Thank you, Josh Tyler. Thank all you. that is. Thank you. All that is, if you go to a woman who has an interest in you I mean, and you tell her, I'm having problems, the first is you, come on, baby. She's trying to move on in. I mean, that's, that's she's her trying to move on in. And you will never find a more comforting shoulder yep. than the shoulder of a woman who's trying to get you when you're talking about problems in your relationship. Yes, sir. She would be the most welcoming, most loving, most caring person you have ever met in your life. If you tell her, my wife ain't cooking for me. What's she gonna do? Cook, cook for you. And my wife ain't cleaning <laughs> my shirts like I like. Oh, yeah, I starts like you today. Starts like you never had them starts before. Oh, she <laughs> ain't doing X Y Z in bed with me. X Y Z done. A one, A two, A three, the whole gamut. Okay. There okay. it is. Cause you, you giving her. Exactly. And basically gave her permission to disrespect me because she know everything about me now. She's yeah. calling me, she's telling me about myself. So, Ms. Thomas, why else do you believe that he is sleeping with Giselle? He hung out with her twice and he lied about it both times. Okay, when you say hung out with her, like he went out to the club, he, picked... he went to her house, what are you saying? Yes, he went to her house. She picked him up from the train station after work. They went out, I think they went to the bar. As I was leaving out the door, I told her we was pretty much done at that no, time. No, he I said... I was angry at that time and I, and I, we, I was done. Mr. P.A., let's see, I believe you, that you were walking out the door telling her we're pretty much done. If she's already at the train station waiting on you, I mean, that's pretty quick. You already had that lined up before you walked out the door. I mean, she, I mean, she Amen. actually was, she stayed like right down the street from where we stayed at. I mean, it wasn't like I had oh, to Oh, I'm just it up. not hearing about this. I so this is news to you? I'm just not hearing about this. You know what, but the beauty of this court is we get to the bottom of it. Mm -hmm. And there's your side, there's his side, and of course, there's Giselle's side. Oh. She's here. <laughs> We're gonna go straight Hello. up. Okay, you go up to the witness stand. Liar. Oh. The queen just said. Ladies, ladies. No queen. No, you ain't no queen, honey. Ladies. If you're a queen, you have your Chill. own man and not try, not try to talk to mine. Ladies. Good day, ma'am. How are you? I'm good, thank you. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Uh, state your name, please, for the court. Giselle James. Ms. James, can you tell us the nature of your relationship with Mr. P.A.? Me and Ray are friends. Um, we've never been any more than that. We actually met through mutual friends. Uh, he was dating a friend of mine before. Nasty. Ms. Thomas, do you know about his relationship with Ms. Thomas? Well, at first, he didn't tell me anything as far as them being together or anything. How I found out more about her was basically she contacted me. She contacted you? That's yes. a lie. <laughs> and okay, what did she say what, when she contacted yeah. you? Um, she was basically asking me why am I talking to Ray and I'm that's her man and stuff like that and I want her life and things of that nature, basically. Ha has, mis has Mr. P.A. made advances toward you of a sexual nature? No. He has never come to you wanting more from a relationship? Not, Romantic? Not while they were together. Okay, so... You had he has shown a romantic interest in you. In the past, before in the them. past, before them. Yes. Were you interested in him romantically? Honestly, no. Now why are you texting him thanks, baby, and, and text him and call him late at night before he gotta go to work? That's when Miss Thomas did. accused you of wanting her man, what did you tell her? Um, I basically, well, to be real with you, I didn't really clarify anything with her because the way that she came, it was so disrespectful and childish to the point where I felt like... Texting my man at night it is was disrespectful more of, and childish. It was more of a thing where I was just like, get out my face until you know how to talk like a grown woman. That's so she basically. came with you a certain way and you just, you like, okay, I'm gonna let that hang out there. If, if that's how you want to be, I'm gonna just let that hang out there. So you never confirmed up or down that you were 
sleeping with or involved with Mr. P.A. You no, just, I did. Just did. I did make it clear that we haven't never done anything, but that's a lie. She would constantly. The, you are. Look, you you'll told be me surprised. on the phone the second time I talked to you that you had sex with him, that you can take my man, honey. Keep it one hundred. Did that conversation take place, Ms. James? I'm sorry. Am I able to address her directly, or should I even? Yeah, you, you ask, well, or should I even pay her talk? any? Let's or should I, I pay her any mind? Here's what I'm asking you a question. Uh huh. And my question is, did you ever tell Miss Thomas that you had had sex with Mr. P.A. or and or that you could take her man? No, I told her that I could sleep with her man if I wanted to. But I made it clear lie, that I didn't. Why you gotta lie? Okay, so what would you tell Girl, Ms. Thomas? Girl, we can take a lot of tests to write. You lie, they need, they need lie to give you one. They, they can, they can, and you they gonna feel real dumb one. that we never done anything. They, you should feel and dumb. And you look t- stupid. Talking to somebody else's man. I should feel Here, dumb talking to my friend. Man, honey. I have it's my own man. I have my own man, and I have my own man. Okay, you talking to him? Texting him, calling late at night. You okay with that? Miss Thomas. Miss Thomas. Like, you know, when that happens, Ms. like, you hey, like hey, hey, Everybody hey. quiet. Mr. P.A., don't yeah. you jump in this, too. You got me swinging this gavel around. <laughs> <laughs> My question to you is, yes. do you believe that he's cheating with anyone? Um, he hasn't said anything of that nature that he's currently dealing with anybody, but he did say that he had messed with somebody before on her. So she knew that it... before I got to know. Hmm. How do you right. figure that? I see she's in. Thank you, Ms. James. I think we've heard enough testimony. Here's what it's looking like from our viewpoint. Ms. Thomas just has a woman's intuition that something is going on because Ms. James keeps resurfacing, keeps resurfacing. She gets rid of her, she deletes her, she keeps resurfacing, he keeps bringing her back into the picture. And all this has caused Ms. Thomas to believe that Mr. P.A. is still involved in a relationship with Ms. Giselle James. And if you find out he is still involved with her, your relationship with Mr. P.A. is done. Yeah. So this court has done a full and complete investigation. At this time, the court would like to call certified polygraph examiner Michael Williams to determine, is he cheating? <laughs> Michael Williams. How are you, bro? Right on to the... How are you, Mr. Williams? Good afternoon, Your Honor. So, you conducted a polygraph examination of Mr. P.A., is that correct? That's correct. You asked Mr. P.A., since the start of your relationship with Ms. Thomas in September of 2016, have you had physical sexual contact with any women you met online? What did he answer? Your Honor, he made an admission and said yes. What did, already, well, there's no she reason. She knew for, about that, though. But Just she, recently, though. Yeah. So uh, this is the. These are some of the infidelities he's confessed to since, since you court, set the court yes. date. All right, Mr. Williams, you asked Mr. P.A. since the start of your relationship with Miss Thomas in September 2016, other than the times she knows about, have you had sexual intercourse with any other woman? What was his response to that question? Your Honor, he said no. What did the polygraph determine? The polygraph determined on this particular question, he was being deceptive. Really? So That's these are her. these are infidelities that she doesn't know anything about, because there's some he's confessed to. The question was specifically about the ones he has not confessed to, correct? Excluding, excluding the ones he hasn't confessed to. Mm. Mr. P.A.? I mean, basically, that the reason why I probably felt that question was because we talked about timelines. We didn't talk about particular women. So you were confused about the question that asked you, well, other than I mean, what she should... already knows about, have you been with any other women since you were with her? That sounds like a pretty specific question to me. Yeah, it, it was. I mean, it was one person that I, I didn't specify about. To so her. That, that's it, yeah, but the time I had the timeline I told her is correct. Do I know this person? No, you do not. When I was so you know, three I was... people you cheated with is what you're saying. Yes. Why when you confess, why don't you just tell the truth all the way? Why do you just keep on one hundred? Why do you tell the truth but don't tell the whole truth? Why do you wait to days or months later I mean, you're to tell too the rest hyper, of the truth? Man, I just I just can't do a conversation just, just... like that. All right. You asked Mr. PA 
since the start of your relationship with Ms. Thomas in September 2016. Have you had sexual intercourse with Giselle James? I see you gripping that podium. Yeah, a little bit. What was his response? <laughs> Your Honor, he said no. What did the lie detector determine? Regarding sexual intercourse with Ms. James, he indicated deception. Both y'all some like y'all y'all can y'all can have each other. Hey, this is really funny. But shut your mouth. Shut your mouth. Ain't, ain't she done? Nah, <laughs> nah. Excuse me. Are we? Is that stating that, that we had sex? I haven't had oral sex with this man. I haven't had regular intercourse with this man. So I wouldn't. Oh, I'm not understanding. Let me do it this way. Mr. Williams. Yes, Your Honor. Would you share with our litigants your history with polygraph examinations? I'm a retired federal agent. For 25 years, I've been involved in law enforcement and conducting polygraph examinations. With the FBI. I've conducted and all that. over 900 polygraph examinations, and I used four indicators of deception, and you failed three of the four indicators of deception. Okay, but... And these indicators of deception are physiological responses, is that right? That's correct, Your Honor. And these are involuntary physiological responses that the person being questioned cannot control. Cannot control. Ms. Thomas, you came here to get some answers. I got them. You're done? I'm done. Y'all can have each other. Bye. Girl, please. It's real easy at this point when people say, I'm done. Now, no, you all have a child together. You're gonna have to learn to co-parent that child. Yeah. So you all gonna have to get up and over all this crazy because your child needs both of you. Mm -hmm. that's, not, that's not gonna be an issue. You all have been together for a couple of years and this new relationship may be on its last legs depending on what happens here today. Is that right, Ms. Burnett? Yes, Your Honor. Tell us why you've initiated this case. I feel like Charles has been super shady after I've had a life-threatening hospitalization. And um, ever since I've been better, he's um, been very distant and he's changed his whole attitude towards me, basically. I just feel like he's up to something and I would like to know, you know, what before I continue to try to spend the rest of my life with a man that's not solely spending his with me. So something's changed. Something's changed. Something's different. Something's different. And you think that something different has to do with some other woman or other women? Maybe, possibly. But you know it ain't just you. It's something else. He's, he's different. All right, she says you're different. What are you doing different, Mr. Modern? Well, she, she broke up with me because I was too clingy. So I'm not trying to be too clingy no more. She, she said you were too clingy. Yeah, that's why the reason she left me in the first place. So, Ms. Burnett, what does too clingy look like? I couldn't go to the bathroom without him in the beginning. Like, literally? He, literally. He <laughs> treated me like I was a chunk of gold. He'd put my shoes on for me. If I was to get up to go to get me something to drink, like, he'd almost knock me out of the way just to go get it for me. And, like, yeah. <laughs> oh. I, I, I'm not seeing where this is bad. Tell me. Well, I, I mean, um, you know, it just got it just got too much for me, I guess. And then since we've been back together, like he, like I said, he, I, I did have a hospitalization where I was, I almost died, and um, he he came back to take care of me. And ever since I was able to do for myself, that's when I've noticed that he was slipping. All right. You got a man who wants to take care of you, who's doing things for you. It sounds like he's almost waiting on you hand and foot. You know how many women would, would kill to have that, don't you? Yes. I mean, you say he's too clingy, and Mr. Martin, you kind of making the rest of us look bad by doing all that. I'm like, she says, I found the perfect man. He treats me right. He's doing for me. And you do what every woman would do, break up with him. I don't, I don't understand. <laughs> What do you do after the breakup? I leave and I go back to my hometown where I was from. Okay. And then I, I met somebody else and I was in a relationship. And when she had this life-threatening thing going on, I rushed back to her. I dropped everything that I had going and came straight back to her. He wasn't too clingy then, was he? Well, no, I mean, he, he literally had to do everything for me at that point. I mean, as far as washing my hair, including wiping my butt. 
you know. Well, that's that's a lot of info. <laughs> okay, all right. And he covered yeah. it all. Yes. All right, so you get back together and you say you've seen a change. Tell me about this change you see. Um, well, we have one vehicle. I would take it and I would drop him off at work and go about my business, come pick him up. Well, one day I went and got him something to drink and a pack of cigarettes and I went to take it to him and he was not there. And all of his little buddies at work, it's construction, mm -hmm. you know, um, nobody knows where he went. Uh, he's at a different job site. Most of the time it's a uh, hotel work. Uh -huh. So one can only imagine. It's very accessible, very easy to make it happen. Yes. Well, where did his coworkers tell you that he was? I had three different stories for where he was That's that what I was particular day. They should have got together first. Yeah, I yeah. said, okay, yeah. huddle. Yep. This is what we're gonna tell her. Yeah. But see, it's kind of hard to get all my coworkers on the same page when the boss man comes to me and says, hey, I need you to run to do this job real quick. Like, I'm a maintenance man, plus I'm a remodeler, plus a uh, construction worker. Like, I'm remodeling the hotel right now, and at the time that she came and surprised me at work, I got sent to mow grass at another site. So you're saying you weren't somewhere with another woman. You were doing no, your work. I was at my job. What did you say when he came home? Well, I have to ask him where has he been because it should not take him three hours to get home when he only works 20 minutes down the road. All right, so tell me about that. Um, I have submitted some uh, evidence for y'all. Okay. Do you need to go to the plasma? Yes. All right. Okay, so this is basically a map from where we're at. Um, in Chattanooga is where he works sometimes, and also I give him the benefit of the doubt and uh, even factored in another job site location in Hickson to our house in Saudi. Okay, well, it should take only 22 minutes, and it takes three or four hours. And then again, even if he works in Hickson, it should be less time than that because it's closer, but it still takes him two, three, four hours to even get home. Why is it taking you three hours to take a 22-minute trip? Traffic. Traffic gets bad because of construction. <laughs> okay, so you telling me he's coming on three hours later uh, for a trip that's 22 minutes or 18 minutes. But if it's construction going on, if it's construction, construction means traffic, and traffic means a delay. Even and if you had construction, it's not going to take three hours for an 18-minute trip. They be taking out doing... bridges and... Adding lanes, exactly. taking lanes. Yeah, I mean, tra Ross. traffic has been horrible. You haven't driven through Chattanooga, have you? So this is what y'all gonna do? <laughs> I don't know. All right, all right. I'm, all right. I'm giving him the traffic. Right. Okay, no, no, y'all go ahead. So what else you got? I so know why, it's something Why don't you here. think it's the construction, Miss Burnett? Because I have uh, live traffic cam footage. <laughs> Whoop, there it is. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> What do you have? Okay, so here it is, the live cam from Chattanooga to Saudi. This is on a Monday at peak hours in your construction zone that he's hollering about with absolutely no traffic, no 18-wheelers. So this is about the time of day he would be coming home from Chattanooga to where you all live in Saudi Daisy. Yes, Your Honor. Not a traffic, not a nothing. <laughs> mm. All right. Okay. And then another one would be from uh, Hicks and Saudi, um, a Tuesday, again, peak hours, no traffic. And the, and the empty lane is going towards your house. Yes, this right here would be going towards, this is coming from. There's another tractor trailer coming the wrong way. Looks like it's headed right toward me. Yes, it is. <laughs> Boom. <Boo. laughs> All right, is that it? Yes, Your Honor. Ma'am, please step to your podium. All right, Mr. Martin. Okay, Your Honor. You know, you, you had me out there. Rush hour is 5 o'clock, and when I'm going from Hickson, I don't come straight home. I got to go back and set clock out before I can come home. What else you got? Is that it? Okay, so uh, going through a phone, when I can figure out the passcode, um, it's like it's a brand new phone. Like, we literally just bought it and took it off the shelf and tried to turn it on. There is no pictures, there is no contacts, there is no messages. So you're going like, through his phone? Well, I have. Yes, I'm not even gonna lie, I have. You have gone through his phone. <laughs> so he's wiped it. Wiped it. So there so, should be some record of, of at something. least something. Something, I mean, ordering pizza or something. I mean, there's nothing. So do you have an app on it that erases it when it's not you? No, Your Honor. Uh, see, I'm used to it back in the old days, flip phones. 
See, oh, no, we, uh, we, had, we had just recently upgraded to these smartphones. Okay. And see, I do construction. And if I don't got a lock on the phone, then my pocket, like, deletes everything. And I, I, it just recently happened to where I had to go get one of my friends to go get everything on all my apps back. Ms. Burnett, are you buying that? No. No, Your Honor. You think he's cheating and deleting, right? I'm pretty positive he's doing something. This, this new smartphone thing, it ain't for me. I'd rather go back to the flip phone where no. I won't have these accusing problems. I won't have these problems where, oh, my pocket deleting everything. I'd rather stick with the flip phone, Your Honor. I tell me that you have nothing else. Sometimes he would say he's gonna go visit uh, family members and uh, we're not allowed to go. He'll have to go by and say, oh, I'll just be right back real quick. But three or four hours later, see, that that's what's getting me. Every time that he's gone or disappearing, or it's always that time frame, the three, three to or four, four hours. hours. I mean, I don't want to be too clingy. So I, it, I like to leave her at home, you know, <laughs> and go handle the business by myself. All right, so oh. the one time you want him to be clingy, <laughs> the one time you want him to be clingy, he's not. I think he's going somewhere else. And, and let me just ask you, does this family member pri the, that he's primarily visiting, do they live in the area? No, not really. It, okay. It's kind of a little bit of a drive, but um, not three or four, not hours. four hours. Okay. No, not to, I'll just be right back, you know? Yeah. yeah, yeah. My family member helps us out. Okay. With financial situations. Okay. Okay. I go to the grocery store and pick up funds. Okay. To get to help us through so oh. I can get my next paycheck and we can go on about our life. But see, I, my, my family members live two hours past Atlanta. They live in Columbus. Okay. And we live in Chattanooga. There's no way that I could drive down there, see my family members, and then drive back and be back in two, three hours. But you know what would eliminate that? Is if you let her go with you. I mean, I, she says I'm too clean. Uh, Your Honor, I don't see why she has to go and stand in line with me just to get funds when... I'm making sure ain't nobody else standing in line with you. I go, oh. and I get funds, and I come right back. I don't know. I, it, it, I, I tell you this, whatever it is, it's got you here. Yeah. That's, that's the main problem. I Let's... ain't hiding nothing, Your Honor. All right, well, we about to find out whether you hide or not. This is the evidence we have, Mr. Cover. All right, what do we got? He used to worship the ground she walked on to the point of being clingy, she says. Now he ignores it. He's distant. He won't let her go with him places. He disappears for hours, this magic window of three to four hours. His phone is wiped clean. Now, the question is, Miss Burnett, if he is cheating, what's gonna happen? We're gonna have to separate. All right, so everything is at stake, Mr. Cutler. Everything. Everything's on the line. Everything's on the line. So, what did we do? We did a full and complete investigation. At this time, the court will call a certified polygraph examiner and licensed private investigator, Kendall Shull, to determine, is he cheating? Ron, please report Mr. Shull that. Mr. Shell, good day. How are you? Good day, Your Honor. I'm good. How are you? It's good to see you. Good to see you. The court had a cybersecurity expert do a forensic analysis of Mr. Modern's phone, and you have the results of that investigation, correct? I do, Your Honor. Your Honor, during our investigation, our cybersecurity expert came across an unusual situation with Mr. Modern's cell phone. Mr. Modern had no files in his deleted folder. He also had no text messages, no photos, no videos, and no apps, which is certainly suspicious. However, we did find, Your Honor, multiple calls to a motel. Mr. Modern? Your Honor, that is my family member living at that motel. So the family member you're visiting or a different family member? It's the family member that she's talking about that I visit. Okay. But, Mr. Martin, how coincidental is that that you have no other, nothing on your phone except calls to this one motel? 
And you said it's a family member. Yeah. You sure there's no woman there that you're seeing? Yep. All right. Mr. Shaw, in addition to the cybersecurity review, you also did a polygraph examination of Mr. Modern. Is that correct? I did, Your Honor. All right. You asked Mr. Modern, when you leave work, are you meeting up with women for sex before going home? What was his response? He said no, Your Honor. What did the lie detector determine? The lie detector determined that he was being truthful, Your Honor. He's standing pretty confident. I see that. All right. You also asked, Mr. Modern, when you tell Miss Burnett that you're visiting your family member, are you meeting up with another woman to have sex? What was his response? He said no, Your Honor. What did the lie detector determine? The lie detector determined that he was being truthful. We got one more question. You asked Mr. Modern, since getting back together with Ms. Burnett, have you had physical sexual contact with any woman other than Ms. Burnett? What was his response to that question? He said no. What did the lie detector determine? Well, on this question, the lie detector determined that he was also being truthful. All right, Ms. Burnett, what you got to say? You smiling? I feel silly. <laughs> I think it's your turn to be clingy. I do apologize, baby. Oh, my goodness. I accept your apology. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Mr. Cutler, what are your words of wisdom to Mr. Modder? You need to find a different route to work. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, clearly there's uh, a love between you all. Clearly you want to be together. This is a man who cares about you deeply and... You know, you got to stop being so suspicious. Yes. You have to stop making her so suspicious. <laughs> <laughs>